Ed Newman started with us, uh, with me, with specifically uh, with The Nation's Future, and I was the one who asked for him. He had come back from London where he was the bureau chief, and he didn't really want to come back. He wanted to stay in London, but there was, I don't know what the politics were. They sent somebody else, and he was stuck in America and didn't quite know what to do with himself, and I put him on The Nation's Future, and it was very exciting for everybody. And I promised him that, as a result of that, they started really giving him some really great global assignments. He traveled then all over the world from them. And when I went to Russia with uh, Armand Hammer, which I did many years uh, after I did the Kremlin, uh, I sent for Ed, and he, they flew him in, and he had one day in Moscow, which he spent doing an interview with Brezhnev. It was Brezhnev's 75th birthday, and Armand Hammer had arranged it for us. So Ed had, he had a, a global sense, which made it very exciting for me. He was an, an extraordinary man, and of course he spoke the perfect, the, the most perfect English. As you know, he wrote books on the subject and would correct everybody, which made me very happy. Because half of the world in America doesn't know how to, the difference between me and I. You and me and you and I. Everybody makes mistakes. But it's become an accepted form to say mm -hmm. it wrong. Yes. In any case, Ed Newman used to correct everybody. He also was very interesting. He had a way of speaking that he could say the same thing five times, ten times. Ex and his lip movements were exactly the same. So if he said something on one take and there was noise, I could use that take with a voice from another take where there was no noise and it would be perfect because his lip movements were always exactly the same. He was a, he was a professional, a consummate professional and a brilliant guy, a brilliant mind and a joy to work with, really a joy to work with, unlike some of those people that I met at NBC.